now. What the hell? <laughs> it's giving Wicked Witch of the West. Hello besties and welcome back to the vlogs. If you're new here, hi, my name is Alexis Barber. I'm 23. I'm currently in Los Angeles, California. It is Wednesday, August 24th. And I have just announced today that on a TikTok for the first time that I have been creating this robe. Can you see her? Is she not so nice? for the last eight months. So this vlog is gonna be my first series of my entrepreneurship vlogs because I feel like this is something I'm extremely interested in is what it actually takes to build a company because nobody fucking talks about it. Like everyone is like, yeah, I raised money and won't tell me anything else. And it's like, until you have entrepreneur friends, it's actually genuinely really hard to figure out how to do entrepreneurship. So we're talking about it. So to begin, it is Wednesday. We are T minus approximately six weeks from the pre-order launch. These dates could change because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing genuinely. Like I really don't. So I feel like I could open the shop earlier. I could open it later. I don't really know. But if you're, if you want the TLDR, I designed a line of luxurious robes, starting with this one, the Too Cozy robe, which is made of a custom handmade, stunning fabric that is super soft and cozy. It's slightly oversized and it's beautiful white color and it's also incredibly functional. So something that I really hated when I was looking for robes and purchasing luxury robes was that one, they all had the same design and that design hadn't been updated in years. So there's three main things in this robe that I can't find anywhere else. And one is when you wash it, it stays just as soft, if not softer, as long as obviously you're doing the correct care settings. Two, the actual loop in the belt doesn't come off. It's attached to the robe because it's really frustrating when you just lose the loop of your robe somehow. And three, this is a sample, so it's not the exact size. I actually increased the size of the button, but there is a strap for you if you want to, to basically adjust the sleeve length. And with that, it's gonna completely cover that whole arm so that you're not like, it doesn't like things don't fall through and it's gonna stay up so when you're cooking or washing your face or something like that, the sleeves aren't super big and they stay out of your way. So that's why I created it. This brand story is a whole nother story which we'll tell at another time. But this is a vlog and I wanna tell you what I did today specifically. So, so I just got off of an hour long call with my brand designer. Her name is Lola, AKA at the brand doula. I've had her on my podcast before a long time ago and I always really wanted to use her services. She also works at Google with me but she has a whole incredible business, the brand doula outside of work. And I absolutely love working with her. She gets it. And she built all the branding for my podcast and for my um, robes. She and I just talked and essentially what we need to do, because I just changed my strategy last week, which is a f crazy turnaround. I wasn't gonna launch, I wasn't gonna talk about the robes publicly until December, but I had a sort of change of heart for a few reasons, which I don't know if we'll talk about right now, but we will at some point of why I decided to go the pre-order route. But essentially I needed her, I need her to design a landing page for my website so that people, once they hear about the robes, they can sign up to be notified afterwards. Um, and then I also needed her to help me design the packaging, so the boxes that the robes are gonna come in. And because it's a really thick material, we had trouble finding boxes that are actually the right size um, because the biggest boxes that you can get on the like sustainable um, packaging custom websites, like No Issue and Packalane, are is 15 by 12 by three inches. And this robe by itself just folded casually is 15 by 10 by seven inches. So we ended up finding a solution. I'm not gonna reveal it yet, but we found a few solutions and she's gonna confirm the design. 
with her team they're gonna send it to me so that I can place the orders but it's definitely a lot more expensive than I thought it was going to be so I need to edit my projections my financial projections because it's just really it's really not looking it's not that it's not looking good it's just affecting my profit margin in a way I did not want to realize that it was going to so there's that. I also need to find, figure out a few different things with my manufacturing partners because they are wonderful, but I need to ask them like, yo, how, how, how big are they going to be? I need just some more. I just have some more questions for them and they're great. These are just questions I should have asked earlier. And then I'm also about to hire a new social media assistant. So I have a current assistant, but she doesn't specialize in social media. She's an excellent photographer, but I want someone who's just going to be focused on posting because the social element is the most important thing about this launch. So I'm about to email her and hire her, um, and that's going to be another expense. So this theme of my life right now is expensive. Everything's expensive. Everything costs money. I'm I, like... And something I'll say, starting a business, you need a lot of support and you need a lot of money to get started. I think a lot of people know that, but the ways in which you get that can be, can very much vary. For me, it's been reinvesting all of my influencer money into building a brand. And I invested a lot of that into my personal life and my personal brand, which I wish I would have saved more of it for building this brand but alas you can't do anything about that now and now it's about financing it and sort of just like paying attention to those numbers but for me I was con I know that I need to do it or I want to do this first launch completely on my own financially because I want to own everything before I make a decision about whether to take outside investment and not just like investors, investors, but like getting help from even just like my friends and family. So I want to do it completely by myself. And that's meant that I've take, I've apply, I've like decided to look into applying for personal loans. I'm using my credit card. I'm using all my influencer money and more. And that's sort of how I'm doing it right now. And so um, for me at this point with this launch, like I'm putting everything into this. I'm putting all my time. I'm putting all of my money, all of my energy into this. And so now when someone tells me that something is going to cost a lot of money, I'm just like, okay, like it's just got to be done at this point. So yeah, that's how, that's how I'm approaching it, which I don't know if I should, but the point of these vlogs is just to show you what I'm doing, like what it's like, what are we talking about? What are we deciding? Like this is just how it is and if I make the wrong decision that's okay we'll make it together and we'll fix it together and that's what I want these entrepreneurship vlogs to look like for you I'm not about to sit here and pretend I'm the end-all be-all this is a learning experience for all of us okay and hopefully it's entertaining too so I'm going to check in with my brain and see if I have the capacity to go get my nails done right now because if I might not I probably should they look like shit they actually look like shit I think I won't go. I think I'll go. Good morning. It is Thursday morning and hello. What's up? It's 7.30 a.m. I've been up since 5.30. I got up, cleaned my apartment. I'm so proud of myself because last night, even though I really didn't feel like it, I washed all my dishes and cleaned up my apartment and laid everything out, which I usually try to do. I've just been sort of off my game, but I know I need to be really structured if I'm going to make all of my jobs work for the next few months. So I was like, all right, cool. So I just got off of a call with another supplier for a different product that I want to launch next year. I don't know if you can guess what it is, but I um, was talking to them. It's going to be more expensive than I thought, which like is sort of just like my, the name of the game these days. That's like what I'm learning every single day. Everything is more expensive than I thought it was going to be which is simply great, right? Yeah, so wonderful. I'm a little stressed about that, but we're gonna just breathe. We're just gonna like take it in. We're gonna be okay. And they're gonna send over more information for me and then I'm gonna do the financial modeling for it. So 
Financial modeling, um, like when you're selling a product and creating a product, the rule of thumb, according to Sarah Blakely, who's the CEO and founder of Spanx, is that you want your product to be five times the manufacturing. You want it to be the retail cost to be five times the manufacturing cost. So if your manufacturing cost is $20, then your retail price should be a hundred. That's what she says. Unfortunately, however, that doesn't always work pan out. The main rule of thumb though, especially if you want investors, whatever, is that you want a 50% profit margin at the end of the day. So that's what I'm trying to stick to, including my shipping cost of goods sold, whatever. Cost of goods sold means um, how much it costs to manufacture the item. And it's also referred to as COGS, C-O-G-S, when you're talking about the product. So if I want to make this product that I'm looking at, my target price, like I want it to be priced around $30 to $35. So my cost of goods sold, according to Sarah Blakely's model, should only be $6. But it's looking like um, if I want to have it manufactured on this continent and I want it to be manufactured, you know, with a clear, easy shipping timeline, closer to 10 So... That's okay because I really want to be able to offer products in my line at like because so I know my robe is going to be more expensive so I want this product to be less expensive so I think that's okay with me it's just like you know annoying so gotta get that down the amount of people that I outsource to is crazy we can absolutely talk about that to everyone that I outsource to but yeah, this morning before I start work, I am going to start onboarding my new social media manager, pay my podcast editor, and do some financial modeling. So that's our Thursday morning. So it's the middle of the day and I'm on my lunch break from my full-time job. And I thought I would tell you all what's on my to-do list for this week, which is basically five to six weeks before I launch my pre-orders. So right now I am trying to figure out packaging. So I need to order samples of that. I need to set up an SMS marketing flow where I can text customers. And I've been wanting to do this for a while where I basically just text people daily affirmations in the morning because I post them on my Instagram, but not everybody likes to be on social in the morning. So I'm gonna ask if they want to like sign up for SMS in there. So I need to like set up that workflow and get it to where I can sort of offload it. Then along the same line of packaging, I need to figure out the size of the robes when they come in the package so that I can make sure that they fit in the packaging samples that we order. And then I need to continue setting up my Shopify site. My brand designer and my boyfriend are going to be the people who are working on that. So my brand designer will design it, my boyfriend will code it. And one thing I'm super lucky to have is a software engineer boyfriend. Um, it is the best thing ever, I am very blessed and he can sort of figure out all the number stuff because he's a financial guy, but he can also do the coding stuff, which a lot of brands, um, that's, a big piece, that's a big cost for a lot of brands. So I only have to pay for the design because he'll do it for free because he loves me. Now, next up, I need to figure out my fulfillment. So I have a plan for my fulfillment journey, but I'm running into a few like trouble, I'm running into a few trouble. I'm running into a little bit of trouble setting it up online. So I need to call contact Pietra, which is the site that I used to find my suppliers and see if I can set up my fulfillment on there and then also make sure I can set it up for pre-orders. And then I need to actually start paying for my inventory. So. Those are the things I need to do this week. What I just did was go through my PR and influencer gifting list and write, wrote down everyone who I'm friends with, who I wanna send a robe. And then I started thinking maybe it would be fun to have a party because I have a ton of these friends in New York and I thought it would be cute to have a fun little party in New York where we do, we do PR and stuff like that. So. Um, I emailed a hotel that I've done a gifting partnership with before to see if they had availability in space. So that's what I did today. 
Um, I feel like this vlog is just a lot of talking because entrepreneurship and building a business is just sitting in front of a MacBook, truthfully. But today I have two more fun things. One, I'm going to be talking to a investor. So I am not ready to look for investors, I don't think, and I don't even know if I would take investors because I like the idea of bootstrapping my company and making money and just reinvesting it into the company, blah, blah, blah. But um, I want to understand the influencer, not the influencer, I want to understand the VC and investor space in case that is something I want to do long term. My friend Jules at It's Be Jules on TikTok, she's raised and has a startup. So I, so she actually connected me to this woman who I'm talking to later today, who's a black woman in VC, which is really cool. And then um, tonight I'm going to dinner with my friend Jess, who's my new LA friend. She is the founder of a company called Whiny Baby. So she has her own wine brand, which I think is really cool because that's actually something that I had wanted to do like in like 2020, early pandemic. I was like, wine brands are not cool, but like that isn't, it wasn't something I was passionate about. It was just something I noticed. And to see her do that is so cool. So I'm excited to go to dinner with her today to like talk about being a founder and stuff like that. So yeah, that's what we're doing. Um, and I still have to do my work, which is really hard. It's very hard to get into the focus mode for my job right now. Like very hard. So like the only reason I would take outside investment is because I want to be able to focus on this full time because it is a full time job, but I also love my job and I love creators. So what can you say? What can you do? So, and here we are at the part of every day that I get so overwhelmed that I lie on the floor. The good thing is that the things that need to be done right now are all little tasks. Like, everything's in motion, you know? Except content. I need to make more content. But I think it's more important that I just, like, write down what content I need to make. And then I plan to make it over the weekend. I also need to do my job. Ooh, This is so much. Yeah. Well... I ended up working out because I feel like that's the only way to like reset for me in the middle of the day when I get like super crazy. Well, when I get like overwhelmed and tired, the best thing I can do, even though it's very tough to get myself off the floor, is to work out because there's like really nothing else I can do. But my Amazon packages are here and this is just from an order I recently placed of like little things around the house I've been needing. And I got nail polish remover and nail polish for my toes. Just white. I know I look crazy. I'm sorry. Sorry. But I got it because I ha I'm not getting my nail, my toes done recently because my I had an issue where this woman like basically they trimmed my toenails too much and they were broken and. I can't get like full pedicures because it could get infected. So I'm just doing it at home. And my toes look humiliating and it's summer. So that sucks. And I got some hand soap refills for my hand soap. My friends are coming a week from today. My New York friends. And they're going to come visit for my friend Zara's birthday. So I got extra hand soap for that. And then I also ordered some more hoops because I love these hoops. And I wanted to have some silver ones because in the winter I tend to wear silver more. Summer is more of a gold time. So here they are. Class, they're a little bigger. I never know what I'm looking at when it says like what size to order. Like how would I know? Genuinely, like please tell me how the fuck I'm supposed to know what 20 millimeters is. Because I do not. Then we got some long phone chargers. I find that the ones from Amazon, they last a really long time. Um, and these ones are six feet. And the ones I have in my apartment, I have only of Apple ones right now. And they do not reach anywhere. So I got two of these. I thought I got two of these. It doesn't come with two? It's supposed to come with two. Oh, here it is. Is the other one. And I got another um, sponge because you should replace your sponges every so often. So if you're watching this right now and you don't remember when you last 
replace your sponge for your dishes. Come on, let's get it together. But I don't like this one. It doesn't have a scrub, as good of a scrubber, but it is OXO, so whatever. Whatever. Now, one thing about me is I do not like to put on a bra. No, I do not. And something, and I, this sticky bra from Amazon is the truth. It's number one and not number two, okay? They connect. You always want a sticky bra because I don't want to put on a shirt. My strapless bra doesn't always look good under every shirt. Like, she's the truth. She really is. Then I got some face towels. Something you should def do is you should never dry your face with the same towel that you use to wash your body, blah, blah, blah. And you should never do it on the same towel multiple times. Bacteria is accumulating, sweetie pie. And you can't be having that, especially if you want glowing goddess skin. And here's a tea. I have been doing that because I didn't have enough towels. What's that? A breakout. We're doing these. They're little baby washcloths. I'm going to throw them in the wash now. And then I got some command strips because I want to, if I have time this weekend, hang up the art in this place. Y'all, I don't know. I'm also thinking of moving my mirror back in here because I feel like the two bookshelves is a little bulky for the room, but I don't know guys, like every day I struggle, every day I suffer a little bit more in this house. I hope you know that's sarcasm. Anyway, we got the gold version of the same. So that's my little essentials Amazon haul, which of course it's like stuff I felt like I needed that comes out to be like a hundred fucking dollars. but. After my workout, um, I only have 15 minutes before my call, so I'm gonna drink this Diet Coke, take my call, do some work, go on a walk, shower, and get ready to go to dinner. My thing is, guys, I really would prefer to shower right now. I do not like to sit in my own filth, but I know I'm gonna go on a walk later and I'm gonna sweat, so, ew. I love Diet Coke, bro. Guess who's running late? Cause she thought she had more time than she did, check. It's me, and I look crazy. So, getting ready to go to dinner with my new friend Jess, and we are going to a place called Everlay, Everly? I don't know. It's in West Hollywood, it's not far at all, but you know. So I thought like I'd be fine, but obviously it's seven o'clock, dinner's at 7.30, I haven't called my Uber, done makeup on, don't know if I like my outfit, and yeah. So cool, cool, cool. But I wanted to tell you how my talk went today. Um, this woman was really helpful and informative and we talked about, this lighting is horrific. Like I'm genuinely sorry, I'm like actually gonna stand up because I'm not gonna subject you to that anymore. In the words of Beyonce, Giselle Knowles Carter, you can't give black girls blue light. If you know, you know. Anyway, so the venture capital world, let's talk about it. Basically, this is a world where large companies get loans, you could just call them loans, um, but we'll call it funding, from larger companies, and they are expected to invest that money into startups and then make a profit on those startups and thus make a profit for their fund and then they pass it up to their fund, blah, 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 blah. So venture capital is a great tool if you are starting a company that has a very high startup cost. So for example, Uber and Lyft had to build the whole backend strategy and software for Uber and Lyft, and that technology is worth a certain amount of money. Therefore, when they started, they needed to pay engineers to make that, and they needed a high startup cost, so they went and got venture capital funding. So. Glossier is another company that got venture capital funding. Um, some other company, like most companies you know of, are venture backed. And it's very difficult to break into venture capital. In fact, I believe only less than 5% of venture capital funding goes to women and less than 1% goes to black women. So the woman I spoke to today is a black woman who works at a VC firm. So she works at one of the places that's investing in startups. And she doesn't have one of her own or anything, but she works there. And so she gets to help decide like 
who they're going to give their money to. And there's positives and negatives to taking venture capital. First of all, you have to give up a percentage of your company. So if you own 100% of your company, Becky's Bagels, and you want to take on a million dollars so that you can expand to, I don't know, the other side of the world with Becky's Bagels, then you, depending on how much your company is worth, they will basically say that your company is worth $10 million and you're Becky's Bagels. And do you want to take on a venture capital, like, you want to take on a million dollars? Basically, like, you were giving up a percentage of your company to say it was worth $10 million. You took on a million dollars. You're selling a million dollars. So they have 10% of your company. So if your company eventually becomes $100 million, they get that profit because they own 10%. Does that make sense? I hope it does. I'm trying to be as inclusive as possible here and like explain things because I didn't know any of this at all. So I'm trying to explain it as best as I can. If I get it wrong, I get it wrong and we get to learn together. Yay. So my company is obviously very, very new and hasn't even launched yet. Doesn't have revenue, doesn't have anything. Doesn't, we don't even know if people are gonna want it, you know? So there's really no point in me taking venture capital or a, like looking for venture or anything. That's not what I'm personally interested in. What I am personally interested in is getting to know more about the space, just learning. Like, that's it. Because um, the one thing that venture capital and investors can offer you is the following support. And having support, having people who maybe have experience in the industry that you're trying to break into, um, that's a really good reason to take funding. So I just wanted to learn more about it. So it was just like a call where we learned more about it. She's really cool. We'll hopefully meet up when she's in New York, but that's like just what I wanted to give you the VC overview. Um, what I have heard from my friends who are in VC is that it's a very toxic culture because once you get funding and you don't own your company anymore, 100%, you start getting demands. So if they own part of the company, they can tell you what to do, you know, and they can be like, you need to do this because it would look really bad if they sold the part of the company they own, like all these different things. So it's just like very much a double-edged sword and I don't know if I would ever honestly consider it simply because of that and I would never want to give over a lot a large percentage of my company but under pretty much any circumstances unless I'm ready to stop running it you know like that's sort of my vibe but obviously I'm very new to this so if my opinion changes in the coming years then it changes but that's my naive Alexis Barber opinion okay close your eyes to get away just make my mind and i'm afraid beautiful was just trying to film an aesthetic eating lunch vlog dropped and broke my perfect little bowl so i'm so overwhelmed right now so overwhelmed i have a nail appointment in like 30 minutes time to eat lunch and it's 3 p.m my full-time job I'm behind on shit because I had podcast recording today and was just overwhelmed. I'm just like a mess at the moment and I need to get my shit back together. Um, I also need to feed myself. There's so much to recap. Let's recap because there's nothing else I can do that's productive right now. Here's what the updates are. So I've been teasing um, the robe on social for a little bit and at first I was just getting a little anxious that people were ready to buy but I had a call with my brand manager, um, Lola at the Brand Doula, and with my new social media assistant. And they were like, you're not missing out on orders because people haven't even seen the product yet. And I just don't plan on revealing the product for a while because I don't have it yet. I haven't done the full photo shoot yet. I just wanna talk about the behind the scenes and that's normal. And so I was just getting myself worked up, feeling really anxious today, but here's the truth. You cannot mess up anything that is not meant for that that is meant for you. You cannot mess up anything that is meant for you. So I'm not messing this up. I'm not allowing that energy into me. What I am doing is trying to be as strategic as possible because being able to be close to a structure is what's going to help me get through this because then I won't rely on like high and dry emotions. But I'm just really stressed out luckily though i have a nail appointment at 4 it's 3 30 and my nails are so 
grown out and they're so long i'm so excited to trim get them done and then i'm gonna come back and i'm gonna be doing my friday night alone which will be doing strategy passing a bunch of shit just getting shit d-o-n-e so that's the goal that's the vibe and i'll chat with you soon i have my hair wrapped because i just touched it up because i'm about to go to brunch so today is Saturday and this is my last weekend in LA alone. Next weekend, um, some of my girlfriends are visiting from New York, which is very exciting. But today, this weekend I was just gonna stay in and do content, but some of my work friends are here. And, and so I'm gonna go get brunch with them, but let's chat where we're at. So last night, it was a Friday night. I obviously spent it indoors because I was just purely so exhausted from the week. Like, getting inventory ready, talking to my brand designers, like, my actual full-time job. Like, so much. Like, I was just so fucking exhausted. And then I went and got my nails done. I just got a classic French. And it took forever. I was there from four until... 545 and the point of hard gel is that it's supposed to be faster so I was just a little annoyed and the girl was just like annoying and just wasn't relaxing and then I thought I was gonna be relaxing but it wasn't and then I just like needed a evening as well where I just did not think about the business and didn't think about content and I think that that is actually something that I'm going to like that's a little like self-care tip I'm going to add for the future because I just know that with the amount that I'm spending on this time-wise, I cannot think about it 24-7 or I will burn out. So um, even when Jeff called me last night and wanted updates, we haven't talked in a few days because he's on vacation and I was like, I can't talk about it right now. Like, no, I'll give you the update when... I'm back in that headspace, but I just can't do it right now because if I start talking about it, I'll get really stressed out and I don't have the capacity for that right now. And so I'm like proud of myself for recognizing that I was just doing a little too much. But that being said, today I'm going to brunch and then I'm going to come home and then tomorrow I'm going to do a bunch of batch content creation because I will be in... I have a really busy next few weeks. So my friends are visiting from Thursday to Monday, which is Labor Day. And then on Monday, I'm flying to Cancun because I'm taking my mom and my aunt and my cousin to Cancun for my mom's 40th birthday. She turned 40 in March. And if you don't know, yes, my mom is 16 and she had me, so that's why she's 40. But um, she has never left the country before. And she also has so many kids and my siblings are really young. So she has never really had a real vacation. And instead of getting her something that like the kids would break or whatever, like I decided that it would be, she always talks about wanting to go on a vacation. So I booked this in March and we chose this week so that Everyone would be able to take time off. Everybody would be able to attend because my aunt is an entrepreneur. She works for herself. She's um, a hairstylist and like a hair educator. And just, like if she takes time off, it's a big deal. And same with my mom, honestly. And same with me at this point. So I technically didn't take completely off. I have a like September is a really big month for work. So I'll probably still be like jumping on my laptop or whatever, but Anyway, going to Cancun and then I'm coming back to New York and it's fashion week. So, woo, we're going to be busy. So I need to batch that content tomorrow no matter what. And um, to this morning I woke up, went on a walk and then strategized for my next month because it's looking a little crazy. And so I asked myself the question, like, how can I make my own life easier and just like did that. I was like, I need a strategy and I need a plan. I need to stick to it. And that's that. So that's what I did. And now I'm all ready to go to brunch with my work friends. So these work friends I'm going out with, we met in the Google internship. So we all interned together, actually. So we all interned together in 2019 on different programs. So we were all in marketing and they are all still in marketing, but um, I'm not. And, oh my god, also guys, 
crazy story, I got into Soho House. So I applied to be a Soho House member in May because I wanted the pool for the summer. Yeah, because I wanted the pool for the summer. And also they have like office spaces and I wanted somewhere to record the podcast live, like whatever, like all this stuff that I wanted. And I didn't like, I like they only accept it quarterly or something. So I just had forgotten about it truthfully. And I got the email and like, I'm just annoyed because it costs a total, it costs like $2,000. And this week I also had to pay for inventory, packaging and brand and all this stuff. Like I literally am fucking broke. And so I wake up to this, they're being like, you got into Soho House, but yeah, your account was charged $2,000. And I was like, so yeah, I'll lie, I won't lie to you. The Soho House membership is $2,000 a year and you get access to every single location basically and i think everything that, like you get like two thousand dollars in credit so you can spend on their hotels slash drinks and stuff there whatever but i'm glad that i'm in it because i needed a place that's not my house to work in if i ever need to leave and the one that is in la is actually pretty close to me so that's good but i am not happy that Cause I just like, usually I'm prepared for different expenses and usually I have more than enough in my bank account to cover unexpected influencer expenses. But this time it was just like, I can afford this, but it's not what I want to be spending my money on. So I'm going, but it's all right, you survived. But yeah, so um, we're gonna go to brunch at this place called La Boheme. I've been there before with my friend, Anna. And then we're going to, go to, maybe we'll go to Soho House afterwards, but I'm saying this because I need, I said I signed up for like a little um, welcome to Soho House thing today at 4.30 and I need to cancel it expeditiously. But yeah, let me just give you a quick outfit. So, cause I keep forgetting to give you guys my outfits. This is a dress from Abercrombie. It's so cute. You can wear it strapless or with the thing up, but wanted to keep my jewelry on. What time is it? Okay, we need to leave soon. And then I think I'm gonna wear my classic these sandals with my YSL or with Mr. Telfar. So that's it and I'll see you later. <laughs> Good morning y'all. It's Sunday. Let me tell you something right fucking now. I did a lot yesterday. We went to brunch at La Boheme and then I didn't film any of this because I just didn't. And then our friend was like going to this party in downtown LA, which we went to. The one thing about LA is everything's far as fuck. So it was like a 40 minute drive, but then we ran into more coworkers there. Can you believe it? It was black people. It was so cool. It was called, at this venue called Resident. It's like a day party. It was so nice. That's my favorite type of party. Then we went back to my friend's hotel and her brother is a producer and was having like a house party at his house in the hills and it was like New York themed and he, they had like a chopped cheese truck and let me say something right now that shit was so good and eventually I just I was, we were hanging out there it was a good time as a house party and then I came home at midnight I'm so proud of myself because I could have stayed out I should I I'm so proud of, proud of myself for leaving because Sometimes, you know, you feel guilty and you stay out later, but I was like, I know that I need to do so much tomorrow, so I'm not going to do that. So I just got dressed. I went on a little walk and got a coffee because I am slightly hungover. Took some Advil, and I'm about to go to Soho House because I told you guys I got in, and I figured um, I won't have time to scope it out any other time than this week. So I'm calling my Uber right now because Ubers take seven years to get here in LA. But yeah, man, so that's what we're doing. Separately, I just got a second business credit card. Right now I only have one business credit card and it's my Amex, but I got a second one because I wanted to separate the expenses that I'm spending on my influencer career from the expenses that I'm spending on the robe line. So I got a second card and I opened a second bank account because I did not like how these things were sort of like mixing together. So 
just thought I'd update you guys there because the influencer stuff is, although it is like, you know, related, it's not the same thing, you know? So it's important for me, like probably long-term good for the business, but also like it's important for me to have that like distinction. So yeah, anyhow, we're gonna go to Soho House today. I'm going to focus on content. So I'm gonna write all the podcast episodes, answer emails, post, like do all that because it's just a busy time, you know? So chat later. I am back from Soho House. It was cool, very gorgeous. I wasn't expecting it to be high up because everything, there's not a lot of tall buildings in LA in the same way that there are in New York, but it was in like a penthouse. But I'm home now, I got Chipotle and I'm about to go to Trader Joe's. I stayed at that place till like three and then I came home. I just placed a big clothes order for my mom for our vacation because I wanted to spoil her. And then I also started packing my stuff up because my friends are coming this weekend and they get here on Thursday and we all leave together on Monday. So I needed my stuff to be packed and like I have a busy week. But when I was trying on all my clothes, I just started feeling like down. Like I just feel like two things. Like one, I don't like any, I don't feel like any of the clothes in my closet like describe my personality right now. Like I just, I don't like anything that I have, which is so fucked up because I have so many clothes, but I just think I need to do a major reset on my clothes and like sell everything or get rid of everything and then like restart. But also my body, y'all. Like I was feeling so good in my body for the first like three weeks that I was here. And now like all of a sudden this last like few days have just felt so gross. And I think it could have to do with like my cycle on this birth control. I don't know if you guys know my birth control saga, but I have the arm implant and I had all these issues with it. So they put me on a second birth control. I gained like 30 pounds on that birth control and I didn't like that. And so I stopped taking it in January. And so my body has been like regulating to just being on one birth control for a while. And I'm only like really now figuring out like my periods and stuff. So I think it could just be that, but obviously I haven't been working out as consistently here because ever since my grandma passed, which has been a month now. So I guess I need to just get back into it, but it just really sucks to feel like that. After I was feeling so good and I was so excited that I was gonna actually feel good in my body when I went to Cancun and when my friends were here, like just when that like stopped, like, or just, Right when it's about to happen, it's like, no, never mind. All your insecurities are back. And I just hate that. So I'm going to Trader Joe's. I'm going to try to make myself feel better. I don't know. I wanted to post TikToks today. I wanted to make some more content. But I can't make content when I'm in a bad mood. It's just not good for anyone because then I just get resentful. So I'm not doing that. I'm going to Trader Joe's and I'm just going to, like, take it easy. But I'm just so fucking mad, y'all. All right. I'm back from Trader Joe's. Um, I got stuff to make bolognese, which is what I'm about to make right now. And my Amazon order came, so I figured I'd show you. I'm in a bit of a better mood. I do just feel a little overwhelmed because I have a really crazy next few weeks. So I think that's sort of why little things are bothering me. But after I open this, I'm gonna shower, wash my braids, and cook this bolognese and go to bed, but I ordered some band-aids because I got a cut and I didn't have any band-aids. It's like those types of things when you're moving that just like add up price-wise, you know? Um, and then this other stuff I ordered for my trip next week with my mom. So I ordered some drinking straws because they don't have straws at the resorts and I wanted to be sure that we would have straws if we needed them. And then I got some more Glade plugins because I actually really like having those in my house because um, I, my biggest fear is someone comes over to my house and it doesn't smell good. Now what would that say about me? And then I ordered some um, tumblers, like some fake Yetis because another thing about the resorts is sometimes when you're outside and you have a cold drink, you want um, it to 
like not like lose the ice or whatever. If you're in the pool, you want a cold drink. So I ordered those so that we could have cold drinks if we wanted them. So then since my friends are coming this weekend, I, mean, I feel like we'll probably go to the beach because we're in LA. And so I ordered some beach towels so that I could be prepared. I'm definitely gonna want throw these in the wash real quick, but these are them. They're just black and white beach towels. I think that's really cute. Good to take pictures on. And then I also got a bucket hat to wear in the sun because my dermatologist who does my Botox, which I need to get done again, by the way, um, she always wears sunglasses, a hat, and a SPF, and I feel like I'm getting more wrinkles on my forehead, so I wanted to, oh, now, what the hell? <laughs> it's giving Wicked Witch of the West. Girl. Girl. You really thought... It's going back expeditiously, expeditiously, truly, truly. And then my favorite pens. I actually cannot write with pens that are not these pens. Like, I have loved these pens for the last three years, ever since I discovered them at my Google internship. Unfortunately for me, they've moved on in pen brands, meaning that I can no longer get access to these pens for free. Yes, at the end of my internship, I did take home a bag of them. Precisely. But now I have to order them, and it's like 30 fucking dollars for, I guess it is like a lot of pens, 12 pens, which I'll use for like four months, but it's always annoying. It really is. It's always annoying. But that's my haul. Um, bolognese is coming up, and then I'm gonna do some fall shopping because I hate everything I own. So, for dinner, the bolognese I'm making, I'm doing spaghetti squash as well um, and spaghetti squash like I used to like not really I used to be like what the hell is that why are you eating it but now it's actually like a very good vegetable and I very much enjoy it and it's very filling I understand why they call it spaghetti squash so um, what you have to do for that is basically bake the spaghetti squash for like 45 minutes you cut and cut it in half scoop the seeds out, spray it with some olive oil and season it, and then just put it in the oven at 400 for 45 minutes and you're like set. I just can't remember if I do it upside down or not. But then while that's baking, I'm gonna wash my hair and like then come back and make the bolognese. I'm putting a time limit on myself because I just like can't. I have so much to do and I just, you know, I've gotta get it all done, you know? So can you tell me where, how, how to do it? Okay. Okay, I washed my hair and I have it setting with foam, but I dipped it and they got a little curly, which is annoying, but whatever. Let me show you the spaghetti squash. Um, the spaghetti squash, so good. This is 45 minutes and you can just like put your sauce on it, but I find that that gets really messy. So I'm gonna like fork it out and put it on this plate and then the bolognese, ready to go. I used turkey this time, and then a mirepoix, so carrots, celery, onion, tomato sauce, tomato paste, chicken bouillon, and you're good to go. Like, so easy, the best. It's very healthy, it's lots of veggies, and is even better when it's warmed up, so it's the perfect like meal prep, so. That's all, see you tomorrow. Happy Monday, friends. Um, I've been doing it. I have been discipline today. I woke up at 5.30, went on a walk, um, did a little meditation, posted some content, and then got straight into work at like 8 a.m. and I've just been grinding since. And I'm feeling good. The thing about work, the way that I manage work and my businesses and my own content is that I have set deliverables that I have to like, you know, shoot to my manager and stuff. And I'm just really clear about timelines. And I set time, like deep work blocks every day for work work, which are like two hour blocks where I'm like really delivering on something. And then outside of those two hour blocks, it's sort of like meetings that come in and emails that come in. And I like sort of 
try to batch as much as I possibly can so that I'm not stressed out so like I can still be working the same amount but doing it more efficiently and so that's what I did so far and that block just finished and I just got off of the phone with a trademark lawyer I need to trademark my names for my brands and so um, it takes a really really long time and so I talked to her about that and I'm going to go ahead and do that right now, like do that application and stuff so that I can get done on the books. Then I have a podcast recording with my friend Bria Jones and then I think I will be meeting with my social new social media intern later this afternoon too so that we can get some content going for the Two Collective Instagram. And then I'll go back to work and then I'll probably work out and go on a walk. But that's the vibe. We're living. I'm proud of myself. Morning, baddies. It's Tuesday now, and I just made a coffee. I got up about an hour ago, did my meditate. I just did a meditation, like a seated, a seated, a seated, a seated one, because I didn't have time to go on a walk this morning because I need to record a bunch of podcast episodes before I go to work out of Soho House because someone is gonna come clean my apartment today, hopefully. I scheduled this last week too and they canceled on me 30 minutes before, which sucked. But yeah, I now, I like really want someone to come clean before my friends get here because I just want like my bathroom and stuff to be clean. I just really don't have time because I have to pack for a month away and I'm stressed as fuck about that. So yeah, um, I'm gonna, before I film this podcast, I'm gonna make the most of having makeup on today and film a little get ready with me on TikTok. And I'm gonna wear my gorgeous pink Zara dress. I'm so excited. So that's the vibe. It is currently 6, 3 a.m. The grind has already started, girls. It's already started. I am so mad. This place canceled on me literally at 8.05. If you'll see it here at 8. And I'm literally all dressed and literally ready to go. My house is prepped to be cleaned. Like, it's just so fucking annoying. I hate bad customer service. I sent a very strongly worded email. I would have called if someone would have let me call. But I was still mentally prepared to go work somewhere else today. And I'm dressed and I'm not going to waste my outfit. So still going to Soho House. Still annoyed though because the Uber is more expensive than usual, which is pissing me off. But it has to be done. So now I am going to go to this place and work and I'm gonna come back because I have meetings later today and take the meetings here whatever oh my outfit that's what I showed you, so I show you. we're just doing this basic AF look so cute love um, I'm bringing my other bag though but yeah so annoyed okay y'all um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and end the vlog here it's been such a crazy week. I really just want to take my momentum into this next month. The next vlog is going to be so fun because my friends are going to come visit. So stay tuned for that. I love you so much. And don't forget that you're too smart to not love yourself.